Hey there, future retirees, and welcome back to our channel. Today, we've got something special for those of you dreaming about your golden years. Whether you're close to retirement or it's still a few years away, it's never too early or too late to start planning. In this video, we're diving into the top 10 retirement tips that every senior should know. We're talking about everything from envisioning your ideal retirement to financial planning, healthcare costs, and much more. So grab a notebook because you're going to want to take notes on these essential tips to make your retirement years truly golden. Let's kick things off with tip number one, envisioning your ideal retirement. So over the course of my life, I have developed and built a few businesses and they are growing and on their way to being very successful. A couple of them are, are mildly successful. And what I've found in accomplishing what you want is very important to set goals for yourself and write those goals down every single day. In envisioning your ideal retirement, because thoughts become things, it's important to write down and actually personalize your retirement plan. So whether you want to travel the world or enjoy a serene local lifestyle, your retirement savings need to match your dream. There are different retirement plans out there like 401ks and Roth IRAs and annuities. These may fit into your unique retirement vision depending on what your retirement goals are. I'm not a financial advisor, I am in the insurance industry, but in general, there are different ways that people fund their retirements. I'm sure all of you watching this know what 401ks are and IRAs and annuities. Keep in mind too, that if you want to fund a retirement that seems a little bit out of reach for you based on your savings and income, there are plenty of opportunities for seniors to take advantage of jobs working from home. For instance, I have a woman who works with me who's 84 years old and she works from home and makes healthy right around six figures working from home 100% over the phone. So she just works from home and, and you know in, in her own house and she takes time and she you know she kind of sets her own schedule how she wants to work things. So there are plenty of opportunities out there. You just kind of have to look around. So you may have savings and income in retirement that will fund those dreams that you have and maybe the money isn't there yet, but I just want to let you know that if you do not have the money right now, that there may be opportunities for you to pursue so that you can get the income that you want for your retirement. So make sure that you are very clear in what your goals are for retirement, because I promise whether you're five years away, 10 years away, or five months away, there are steps you can take to making it a reality. So be very clear in what you want, write it down and write it down every single day and take action every day to make sure that, that those goals can come to fruition. Moving on to tip number two, financial planning and savings. You should aim to save about 70 to 80% of your pre-retirement income annually for a comfortable retirement. There are things that will come up such as healthcare costs, social security may help supplement any income or savings. There will always be some unexpected financial surprises that pop up. So you, you never really know, you can never really plan for everything. Tip number three here is managing healthcare costs. So as you know, as we age, we typically aren't healthier than we were when we are younger. You know, there are are some exceptions to that. But for the most part, as people get older, their health deteriorates. You want to make sure that those health care costs are taken into consideration. So health care and retirement on average a person over 65 might spend $6,500 annually. Medicare covers many basic health needs, but there are gaps such as coverage for prescription drugs, hearing, dental, and nursing home care. You might need additional insurance like Medicare supplement insurance, which is Medigap to cover those gaps. If you would like information on Medicare and different types of health insurance, I don't specialize in in that I specialize in final expense insurance, burial insurance, but I can get you connected with someone who does specialize in it. So just shoot me an email at jve at the -E .com. Next tip number four, you want to make sure that you plan for long-term care. Statistics show that about 70% of individuals 65 or over will require some form of long-term care. I believe Medicare only covers long-term care for like 30 to 60 days if you're discharged from a hospital for reasons that long-term care would cover. So for instance, like it will only cover situations where you're discharged from a hospital and it's like you need the care to make sure that you have like continuing care from the hospital. Medicare isn't gonna pay for a nursing home as Medicare isn't just gonna pay for long-term care forever for you. So costs and services like nursing home care and assisted living can be quite high. It can be 
anywhere from $55,000 to $110,000 a year. So you want to explore the different options for covering these costs, such as long-term care insurance, reverse mortgages, or home equity loans. Like I said, I'm not a financial advisor. I sell life insurance. I have a life insurance sales organization, and I can point you in the direction of people who could help you if long-term care is a concern. But long-term care is the biggest decimator of senior assets. You gotta spend $110,000 a year to have a private room in a nursing home, unless you want someone, you know, coughing and sneezing next to you and farting all day. That's no fun, right? So you need to take into account long-term care. Tip number five, you wanna make sure you're optimizing your social security benefits. The amount you receive from social security is based on your lifetime earnings in the age that you start taking benefits. So if you can delay your benefits, it could result in a significantly higher monthly payout. You can just look on social security's website for the calculator to figure that out. But starting your benefits at age 70 instead of 62 can give you a significantly higher monthly income. And what you gotta to realize too, everybody, is that you're probably going to live a lot longer than your parents did so it was typical i remember my grandparents you know retired in their 60s they died within five ten years and that was like normal right like that wasn't too long ago that was in like the 90s and i'm 34 so it's not uncommon now for someone living to their 90s or even over 100. they got 100 year birthday cards at hallmark for a reason right at cvs you you got to understand that even if you wait until 70 years old to claim your social security like you got an extra 20 something years ahead of you potentially 15 20 30 years ahead of you in, in in your life after 70 years old. So you gotta understand that you're gonna need this income for a lot longer. So if you can hold out on collecting your social security, it's gonna go a long way. Tip number six, understand annuities. So annuities can be a reliable source of income in retirement. There are fixed income annuities, there are variable annuities, indexed annuities. I wouldn't recommend anybody retiring to get a variable annuity. I just know from my licensure, having a license to sell life insurance that I had to be certified for annuity as well. Um, fixed annuities offer a guaranteed interest rate. You don't want to be toying with your money in retirement. It's important to understand the terms and risks associated with annuities, especially a variable annuity before investing. But annuities are really, if you're retiring and you have a big chunk of cash, what you do is that annuity, you essentially take your retirement money, say, or your 401k money, IRA, whatever, and you can put all of it or a chunk of it into an annuity. What that will do is it will guarantee you income payments for the rest of your life. So essentially you take take your retirement account, you go to an insurance company, a life insurance company, and you say, look, I want to turn this chunk of cash into income streams. There are all types of different options that you can go through it. If you'd like me to refer you to an annuity expert, just email me at jve at thejve.com. By the way, subscribe to the channel, please, and turn on post notifications if you find this is valuable for you, this information. It's important if you're retiring with a huge chunk of cash. It's, it's a great way to protect the cash too, right? Right? protected from creditors and stuff like that. So you wanna take your retirement savings, put it into a vehicle that will provide you income payments for the rest of your life. Tip number seven is inflation consideration. So inflation can significantly impact your retirement savings. Cost of living definitely increases over time, as you guys have seen. You know, in a lot of parts of the country where more people have new moved to, property taxes have increased significantly. Property insurance, car insurance has increased significantly. I just moved away at, out of South Florida, but listen, property tax, car insurance, insurance and property insurance increased drastically over the last couple of years. And that can seriously hit into someone's retirement income. So if there's anything you can do to protect your money against inflation, sometimes annuities have certain features that can help protect against inflation. And there are other programs that can give you cost of living adjustments. So keep that in mind. Number eight, tax planning different retirement income sources are taxed differently. For example, traditional IRAs and 401ks are taxed when you withdraw the money, right? While Roth IRAs and Roth 401ks offer tax-free withdrawals under certain conditions. So keep in mind, if you have all this money in 401k, you're going to be paying tax when you withdraw that money out of it. So understanding the differences and the tax implications can help your withdrawals to strategically minimize your tax liabilities. And that's very important, especially like if you're selling a property or something, you need to consult someone about that because I've seen too many seniors get whacked with a huge tax bill from selling a property and making a profit or something like that. Next is debt reduction. So tip number nine, reduce your debt if you can. Entering retirement with minimal debt can greatly reduce your financial stress. Focus on paying down high interest debts like credit card balances and consider whether you can downsize your living situation or reduce the number of vehicles you own to decrease expenses. So always look for ways to cut expenses. I mean, when I lived in Florida, I had a, a really nice truck. It's almost like a $100,000 truck. I moved out 
actually to Puerto Rico, got rid of it. And I got this, you know, a little four cylinder car. It cost me $15,000 and, and I don't have to pay car insurance because you don't really need car insurance in Puerto Rico. The government covers your basic insurance costs. So just some ideas there. Retiring on an island. It's not a bad, bad deal, but this is not an attempt to solicit that. So, and then the last thing, test your retirement budget. So before you retire, try living on your estimated retirement budget for a little bit. This can help you adjust to your new income level and identify areas where you may need to cut back or maybe you can afford to spend more. Keep in mind, it's totally okay to get a job in retirement. I mean, I talk to so many people every single day because I work exclusively with senior market, helping them with burial and final expense insurance, which by the way, if you would like information or a quote on final expense life insurance, just shoot me an email at the email in the description or it should come up on the screen here, jve at t-h-e-j-v-e dot com. You can check out my profile as well, but it's okay to work in retirement. Like I talk to so many people who work in retirement. Like I said, this is not your mom and dad, grandma and grandpa's retirement anymore. People live a lot longer. Things are a lot more expensive. So it's okay to have a part-time job. Like you're not a failure. You're not worthless. Like you're not, you didn't fail the American dream or whatever the case is. You just are keeping busy and that's totally okay. The healthiest people I speak with in retirement are the ones who maintain at least a part-time job because it gives them purpose, gives them something to wake up every day to. The people I find who are the least healthy are the ones who wake up every day and have nothing to do and just kind of sit at home and watch TV. Hey, look, if that's your thing, that's totally cool. No problem. But what I've found is that the healthiest people I talk to live a long time. Like look at Warren Buffett. You know, the guy wakes up every day and he's, he's 100 years old and he's still hustling and grinding with it away with his business. So I hope you found value in this video. Drop any comments in the description and subscribe to the channel if you find value in this. I'd love to help any of you out. Please just shoot me an email and I'll do what I can. Thank you so much.